Nathan, what does your schedule look like on a daily basis? Just oh, school? goodness. Okay. So, actually, I'm not What have you been doing classes. today? That's my question. Well, today, today was a little different because, uh, so I woke up around nine. Lucky. Uh, I know I'm lucky. That's why I didn't get a job this summer, <laughs> other than, like, in- interning here. But, like, woke up at nine. I can't remember what I did. This morning? This morning, like early I've this had morning. Days, like. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> when you just don't have anything to do all day, you kind of just forget. Well, what you like do. I was. No, I might have just sat on my phone <laughs> for a little relate. bit, but then um, around ten thirty, I, I got my stuff together, okay. and I went and washed my grandpa's truck. Okay. And then not even your own truck. No, I don't wash my car. So why do you man. wash other people's car? Because he paid me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so uh, it's nice. And so he, I, I got that done around three this afternoon because I, you know, I took a pretty long lunch break. So you've done nothing the whole day. No, I washed a truck. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, so I, I did like a because we just got back from Arkansas. Uh huh. And it's all dirt. Like a lot of the places that where my family lives, a lot of dirt roads. Your family lives in Arkansas. Uh, my dad's side of the family. Yeah. Oh. And so, uh, that's where my grandpa was originally from. So do you don't have classes. During, I'm not oh. taking summer classes. Oh, it's the summer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, but, it must uh, be nice. So, so it's, it's like your summer break right now. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and so basically okay. all I did was I did like a... I had to do power washing. took a little bit longer to get all just like a ton of the dirt and the bugs and stuff off. Gotcha. And then I went over and then vacuumed the inside. This was so, a dirty truck? It was very dirty. Gross. I always take my truck to Bay Brights. I don't care about the exterior. I don't. I don't like. I'll go on a rainy day. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. care about the exterior. Yeah. I want the interior to be vacuumed, and I don't have even anywhere near the patience to do that myself. Yeah. So, I uh, use... my truck is always dirty though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I used to just go through the one where you just do the pressure washer yourself because mm-hmm. dude, it's cheap. Mm-hmm. You can throw quarters in there, and you get. And me, I more care about the exterior because my quarters? interior. Yeah, you just throw the quarters in there. Who uses quarters? For everyone, yeah, the, it's like the the quarter <laughs> the, uh, car washing place. Well, you you throw in a couple and quarters. You pressure wash it yourself. Shh. Yeah, you put quarters. You've never been in one of those. I've been to one that you do yourself, but it uses like a dollar. It's no. like the no, nah, the one, it's either a dollar so or it does. It like swipes your car. The OG the ones, fancy you have the, ones. You have, have the, the quarters. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to the one with the quarters. No. Oh, they, the, they you're talking about better. the big like concrete slab with the with the. It's got the big concrete That's, like wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know yeah, what you're talking yeah, about yeah. now. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, Gosh, I haven't been one. And if you're lucky, some of them have va- vacuums. No, no, no. All, that them, all of them have vacuums. I'm thinking of They're something just in else. different places. Anyways, but since I get my oil changed uh, off a of Dallin someplace, uh, off a of Dallin, I forget what it's called, I also get a free car wash at Bay Brett, and they mm. vacuum it out. And oh, that's P&M. nice. Yeah. P&M it's is like the place a, that I think gives you free car wash. The Texaco. Yeah, Texaco. 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 Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's right where I next go. to Bray, Bay Bray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's nice. That's where I get. That's nice. where I go to get my car inspected, which yeah. I desperately needed because uh, my car was like a year and a half. <sighs> what uh, month does it roll out. over? Uh, I think it was like March, oh. and but it was like March of twenty. 20- 18 or something that it had expired. It was, it was a gonna, long time. That's bad. And I drive through a school zone every day. Uh, yeah. So it's fine. I was lucky, I guess. I and you never gonna, got caught. I thought you were going to say May. Then I was going to be like, we're inspection sticker buddies. <laughs> we're going to high five, but you said much. No, I'm sorry. I, I wish that we could be inspection sticker buddies. But yeah, me alas. Too. Me too. <laughs> so but, but, what classes were you taking last semester? <sighs> last semester was rough. Um I was taking. No, I have to think about this for a second. I was taking. <laughs> you just did them, Nathan. I know, but it was, it was a lot. Forever. Class piano. You paid a lot of money for them. Uh, like piano. I took piano proficiency, mm-hmm. uh, music theory four, sight singing, dictation four. Um, I took environmental geology. Okay. Uh, you know, music, 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 yeah. rock. <laughs> Uh, music rocks. <laughs> uh, and then yeah. uh and then world music. Mm-hmm. And then I had wind ensemble, jazz band, studio, private lessons. Yeah, that sounds all really boring. Brass choir. 
So you're you're going for a music degree. Yes. What do you what do you do with that? Well, you just <laughs> you make music. So, so you graduate and now you're a musician. You're, well, <laughs> I, I think the one of the main reasons I went to Lamar for music was mm-hmm. because they gave me a lot of scholarships. Okay. Yeah. No, that, I mean and that's so. Fair. I I and then you know. Uh, like the in the spring of my senior year, I uh, surrendered to ministry, mm-hmm. um, and so I was like, "Well, this is perfect then, so I yeah. can yeah. get better at music and know what I'm talking about." Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so your goal, like, like once you graduate, is music music ministry. ministry yes. Wow. Um, I don't know if that's going to be uh, like bivocational or mm-hmm. if it's going to be full time. But, uh, and I'm I'm still going to apply to be a game warden after I graduate. I know it's very <laughs> okay. it's things. very opposite things. I'm either going yeah. to be a concert pantist nice. or a caveman. Yeah, and yeah. so but, but the thing was, I was originally going to SFA for forestry. Okay, mm-hmm. I um, didn't know that. Yeah, and so yeah, I was going to do that, be a park ranger, or something yeah, like yeah. the game warden. So but mm-hmm. the thing is, with the game warden, you can have whatever degree you want. Yeah, and you just have to have a decent GPA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you have a chance of getting in. Cool. So, but I mean, the the goal, uh, ministry in some form, mm-hmm. worship mm-hmm. ministry. And then, if the game warden thing doesn't work out, which you know it, it probably won't, just because it's like a one point three or one point nine percent acceptance. Don't really? bind your angels. Really? I'm not. You can do it. I know. I'm. I want to do it. <laughs> okay. But it, if I don't end up getting accepted to the academy mm-hmm. right after I graduate. Then uh, I'm gonna go to seminary. What kind of things oh, do wow. they look for to be accepted? So I did all uh-huh. my research like two years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I, I'm not super fresh on it, but one big thing is GPA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, a okay. huge thing is GPA because like I, the Dang. like one of the game wardens I talked to said that he has a degree in finance, mm-hmm. and um, and he but he had a good GPA. And then one that my dad talked to said that he he did have one in criminal justice, but he said mm-hmm. he wouldn't really recommend it. Hmm. Um, so it's one thing they look for is a good GPA. Basically, mm-hmm. if one person has more experience than the other in that sort of realm, mm-hmm. but they had like a really bad GPA, mm-hmm. then the guy with the good GPA has a better chance of getting it than he does. Hmm. Interesting. And so. That's crazy. The uh, second thing they look for is the ability and, and to watch they, Bambi without crying. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so another thing that they look for is at least a little bit of experience, as in like yeah. doing like a couple like ride-alongs, gotcha. something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. But if if you have too many, then that's bad. What? Oh. Because then people then you think— you get the weird psychos. Well, well, you get people—yeah, exactly. So basically, <laughs> you have people who think that they have experience in doing yeah. something okay. when they really don't. Yeah. It's like that kind of yeah. vibe. It's like he said, you know, go on one or two ride-alongs before yeah. you, you apply mm-hmm. to get into the academy, and you'll be okay. And they'll also give you a chance to have an idea of what they do. Yeah. So game warden or park ranger? Because those feel like different things. I want to go for game warden first okay. in Texas. Yeah. So, and a game warden is like a a police officer, but in the woods, essentially. And okay. they get they get the best equipment, and they play a lot of games. Well, and then and then you have to think about it though. They always anyone that they run across is pretty much armed with some type of weapon. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, that doesn't sound dangerous. I don't at know all. a yeah. whole lot of what their day to day activities are. Yeah, and mm-hmm. also it depends on what well, you're region. Not a game warden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also it depends on what region you're in. Like okay. if you're in station in Orange County, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're going to be on the water a lot, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or like by yeah. the Gulf, you're going to be in the water a lot. Yeah. Um, or you know, if you're in West Texas, you're just going to be driving for just everywhere all the time, <laughs> because like one game warden has. Yeah. I mean, since there aren't a lot out there, it's like an absurd amount of square miles yeah, per game yeah, warden. Yeah. And so, do you think you want to be in the woods, water, driving? Well, I don't get a, I don't get a choice. You get but sent. I, if I, if I would, you get sent, you get to, sent a to a place. I thought you like go. Yeah, up to I think you can have a. Like, say, I think hey, you I want a job. don't quote me on this. I think you can have a preference, but that preference really doesn't yeah, matter yeah. At, yeah. at the end of the day. Hmm. Yeah. So, um. I mean, I would like to be in the woods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the woods or the water. I mean, anything but West Texas. 
really. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. desert. Yeah, exactly. Anything but the desert, I'll be fine with. Like, yeah, okay. the plains would be cool, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Basically, like I said, anything but the desert. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's fan- I, I didn't realize you were such an outdoorsman, Nathan. Oh, I, I love the outdoors. That's I've been to lots of national parks and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So, if not a game warden, then a park ranger. But a park ranger is essentially just a glorified tour guide. Essentially, but yeah. it depends yeah. on it depends on what you're do- doing. Like, if you're no offense to any park ranger, if if, if you're a park ranger, actually, I don't I don't think mm-hmm. I'm qualified to talk about <laughs> anything. But yeah. what it seems like is that yeah. there are some park rangers who maybe only do tours. Mm-hmm. I don't know because they may be alternating. I don't know if it's an alternating system where, like, hmm. say for like a for a while, someone does like is like a tour guide of the park. Mm-hmm. But like, there are other rangers actually going out and doing stuff within the park. Mm-hmm. Probably just like, you know, checking on different trails and different wildlife throughout the whole park. I mean, they have to do park certain. Sometimes you have to do like rescues and stuff like that. And so, I'm not sure how that exactly works, but. That would be like a, a last, that, w- I don't know, I wouldn't, I'm not sure if I would go for that now. Yeah? Like if you're not a game warden, you just If you're not a game warden, I'm just gonna, hmm. just gonna go on. Hmm. And if that, if a park ranger thing opens up in the, in the future, I would probably take it. But the problem is that I think you have to actually have a degree in some type of wildlife mm-hmm. management in order to do that. Or like park gotcha. management. Gotcha. And so that, that's not... That's not something that's really feasible. Gotcha. Do you have to go through some type of training before you can come a not a park ranger, a game warden? Yeah, you go. You get yeah, sent off to a game. You go off to an academy, okay. mm-hmm. and Good. they'll teach you everything yeah. you need to know. There. Like a policeman. Yeah, yeah. essentially, but ju- specifically for game yeah. wardens. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, there is there is training involved. I can't remember how long it is, but mm-hmm. it's a it's a pretty probably like a semester or two. It's like maybe. three to six months or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And so. Like you're since you know, it's a game warden. Then, I mean, they'll teach you everything you need to know about yeah. everything out there. So yeah, okay. So as a game warden, yeah. What is we've asked this question several times recently on the podcast? What is the largest animal that you think you could take on with your bare hands? <laughs> Ooh, that's mm. a. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. I yeah. mean, because like, Josh says. Bobcat, which, no. There's no way that you can take on a bobcat with your bare hands. Last episode. Well, the thing is, like, you could probably physically. You could, yeah. Well, you could, you could, you could physically best it, but the thing is, you're going to get clawed yeah. and yeah. you're going to get eaten up bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, a bobcat would kill me. I could not kill a bobcat mm-hmm. if a bobcat, would, bobcat wanted to kill me. Cool. I mean, they think about it, you. They leap on you and their claws are in you. Like, yeah. Immediate, ooh, that's, that's rough. <laughs> But um, I said like a white-tailed deer, like a deer. But then yeah, small deer. Justin yeah, yeah. was like, "You underestimate you seen, deer." Yeah, apparently the like deer are, like crazy psychotic. Like if they want to get you, like they will. Oh, you don't. You, you don't yeah. want to. I, I heard a story of um, yeah. a guy that he well he works at a camp, but that camp used to be a a, a game ranch, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there were uh, these like uh, oh goodness. I forgot the name of the buck mm-hmm. or the the deer, but mm-hmm. one of those deer impaled him with his with like its with antlers. His, yeah, with his antlers. Oh my oh, god! And so, no. deer are not to be messed with. No. Like you could, you could if it was a doe, maybe. Mm-hmm. But it's, I mean, those are they're very powerful yeah. animals. Yeah, I would say maybe uh, those hooves at the bottom. They hit you in the face. You're out, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because, like, yeah. you think about a lot of these different animals, like, once they start getting a certain size, you can't do it alone. Oh, yeah. To... No, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, like there are not I know I could do, a, like, a, a, a young a young bull. A young bull? A like a young cat? Bull. Not, not like, no, like, bigger. It's like a, like like a right teenage. Out of the womb. <laughs> Go attack it. <laughs> Maybe like a, like a, like a teenage Cow, uh, a, a teenage a cow. cow? Well, a actually, cow's just gonna like trample you. Well, it depends on the size. Yeah, like, that's I, true. I'd say small to small to medium range. Like, like a in between, like a small calf and like mm-hmm. a medium with no horns. With no horns. No. Okay. 
Are we talking Maybe. about out in the wild or controlled? Because if it's out in the wild, out in the soon wild. comes the mama cow. cow <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just the you. one animal that you yeah. have to just yeah, do. Yeah, you don't have to. Day, day. Yeah. Just the one. Man, that's just, that's a tough question. Yeah. That is. There's no way that you're going to get out of it without being like seriously in it. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I could take on a deer. I don't feel like, like. I mean, the thing is, a, if you can I pin can, a, if you can pin a cow. That's true. Then you're good. I guess. But it's getting to that point. Yeah. And it depends on the yeah. size of them. I can definitely capture a chicken and beat them <laughs> up. But it's going to take Have me a while. Have you seen a rooster, though? It's going to take me a while. Roosters because aren't those things are really hard to catch? Yeah, they'll claw you. Yeah, roosters, like, will fight you. <laughs> They're I'm like they're no joke. I used to deliver the mail, and there are people who like have like chickens because yeah. they yeah. think they're living little house on the prairie, and they're like roosters will like defend their territory. Yeah. So I would be like delivering mail, like walking in people's front yards, and this rooster would mm-hmm. like come around the corner. And I'd be like, nope, and I would have to. Oh, okay, so here's here's jog a question. Back to the mail truck. <laughs> here's a question. Yeah. What if instead of running from like chickens and geese and stuff like that? Why don't we just run towards them and smack the crap out of them? Because then they would hurt us. Well, the thing is, like, you think about, like, a goose. They're yeah. notoriously mean. Yeah. But the thing is, if it charged at you, you just <laughs> you just slap yeah. it. Like, you just, like, hit its neck, hit its head, or grab uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. And, like, sling them. <laughs> and sling Break their neck, them. essentially. But, this is why you're the game warden. But, I mean, like, but <laughs> when you really think about it, like, no. if you like challenge that. a bird that doesn't, not like a hawk or something like that, because they have, mm-hmm. like, massive talons and they'll yeah. just gouge you. But, yep. like, that would stink. But, like, you know, like, more like the common everyday birds, like, like mm-hmm. a chicken. Like, mm-hmm. chickens, yeah, you just have to know how to grab them. Yeah. And the roosters and can be. And goose does present a very nice grabbable neck. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like. <laughs> Scrap. <laughs> <laughs> because like you, people get in trouble when they start running, and then the goose That's gets on true. top of them. That is true. Like, you have to think about that. So. That's like uh, I've been attacked by many a dog in my in my day, mm. uh, and you don't run away from a dog. Like, no, you, like if you, you run punt that dog, dude, yeah, get football. You. He's gonna get yeah. you. Now the only like there's like okay, so here's a, here's another question. Mm-hmm. So the levels of complexity. What size? What what size of dog or mm-hmm. what breed? Up to what breed yeah. of dog, like size wise or aggressiveness, mm-hmm. do you feel comfortable? Like I could win a fight with a dog. If it's Probably below my knees, below your knees, yeah, I feel like I could. Oh, yeah. I could get it away from me. Like, but, like, but say, like once it's getting like to the height of my knees, like that's getting pretty, pretty large. That's a big dog. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you? Um, breed of dog. Anything smaller or anything like smaller in aggressiveness than a pit bull, I think, or yeah. Rottweiler. But yeah, some yeah, size, anything basically less than a pit bull, Rottweiler, and a Doberman yeah. and, or a Shepherd. Yeah. 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 yeah, and anything in size, probably less than seventy five pounds. I feel like once you get to closer yeah. to hundred, yeah. they got That's a big well, they can they can just yeah. like smack you in your yeah. legs and you're going down. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, yeah. Dogs don't play around. There was this one mail carrier who was delivering like right out here next to where the church is, uh, off Folsom. And this one guy like let his dogs out to like go to the bathroom. Knew that they were aggressive dogs okay. and just let them off leash out to go to the bathroom. It's pouring down rain. This mail carrier is in the rain, like delivering mail, so these dogs find her. And they like tore her up. They like really ripped dang. out her like Achilles tendon and her meniscus. Oh, so they actually they don't like yeah. carry mace you, or anything? They they do, but like in the rain, it's not going to do much to a dog. But even then, like like the mace that they give you. How is big not were these dogs? Potent. Yeah. Big pit bulls. Like big, oh, they were big. pits. Yeah, were oh, pit you can't do nothing about. Yeah. It. Once they get on you, and they there's multiple out, of them. Yeah, two of them. Oh and my they tore gosh. Out her ACL, uh, her meniscus, and her dang. Achilles tendon. Did she get? Did uh, she sue him or something? Yeah, and Thank the judge said man. that that he had to put him down, but like he went back and like begged, like, ah, uh, they're like my children, I can't. And so the judge was like, if they're ever out again, you have to put them down. But did she, she get, had to have like reconstructive surgery. Like did she, she get, was off work for like oh six gosh. months. Did she yeah. get any compensation? Oh yeah, she oh, got yeah. paid while she was off the clock like that. Man, uh, she didn't get any. That's other when you kind just like. Carry a pistol and just put a cap in them. Like, yeah, I don't know if, she, like, in the lawsuit, if she got anything out of that. I would uh-huh. imagine so, but I, I'm not. I, yeah. I don't know the details. Hmm. But yeah, you're not allowed to carry a weapon. Yeah, as a, as that's a what I. That's a government. You can't employee. even carry yeah. it on the premise of yeah. UPS. Yeah. I'm not UP. 
No, USPS. USPS. Man, I'm yeah. surprised they didn't like give, not even in the give them like a club or something. Uh, some you're not supposed to. Some mail carriers will like carry like a stick around with them. I mean that. that I mean, in my opinion, yeah. that's like the best way to get around that. Just because it's like if you're mm-hmm. going against like a pit, yeah. You, with your bare hands, you're not going to win that fight. Yeah, they're just mm-hmm. like it's hunks terrifying. of muscle. Yeah, you'd find ones that literally are just like muscle with like spandex, like I know. tightened it's... around them. Like there are pit bulls that were like more ripped than John Cena out there. <laughs> I know so they're terrifying. Like, yeah, I... they're like these big, nasty, muscular dogs. One, there was just one pit bull in on this one route that had like part of its uh, mouth was was torn up, and so you could see its teeth. Oh, that's uh-huh. terrifying. Like, through its, it was it was like. A scary villain movie dog. It was I, terrifying. I saw this video on Instagram the other day. Y'all might have seen it too if y'all mm-hmm. watch TikTok or the Instagram <laughs> reels or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's of this kangaroo. Have y'all seen it? <laughs> well, he's like, it has like yes. big biceps. Yeah. Have you stuff? seen that? Kangaroos are jacked. Yeah. Dude, yeah. it was insane. Yeah, you don't mess around with a kangaroo. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Uh, Kangaroos kill people. All I knew the time. they were like yeah. very powerful, but I thought it was like no, they were nah, like with their legs they're ripped. Everything. Like you but can see their biceps video. go out and everything. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, these guys are no joke. Yeah, you don't want to play around with a kangaroo. Yeah. Did you all see that video a couple years ago where that dude like challenged a kangaroo? Like he, he, yeah, the kangaroo yeah, was attacking his dog or something. He went up and like punched it. <laughs> I think I might have. <laughs> I think Maybe. we talked about that on the last episode of the podcast. Maybe. Yeah. But it was wild. I was like, yeah. man, yeah. that dude. <laughs> yeah, we said that that the guy punched the kangaroo in like in the face. Yeah, and it just like was like whoa, and it walked. He wasn't off. expecting it. Yeah, and we were saying oh, that kangaroo you. now is the most dangerous kangaroo because it knows like oh I gotta watch out to like it knows that I can punch people in the face, so it's gonna don't encounter that kangaroo again because yeah. mm. it has learned from this experience. It has, and it'll murder you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, what do you what what do you up to? You just started a new job. Yeah, you just started a new job. What are you so doing? What are you doing now? I am going to bed earlier and waking up <laughs> earlier. That's that's your job. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's my job. Doing sleep studies. That's my job. <laughs> and I used to go to bed around midnight, and some days I can make mm-hmm. it up at like six o'clock in the morning or whatever. But now I'm trying to go to bed around ten. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just started a position at John Crane, which they manufacture mechanical seals if you don't know what that is it's basically like a, it's like a um a, it's a ceiling like device a walrus, but yes. mechanical yes exactly <laughs> just a mechanical wall <laughs> <laughs> mechanical seal yes yeah. yeah um it is a ceiling device uh when a typical ceiling device an o-ring or whatever cannot work so like i don't hmm. have a pump i'm not going to go into too much like of gaskets or so uh no no, just like so it's two, not like a gasket. I'm okay, sorry. gosh. Okay, okay. So, so it's a little foolish. bit more complex than that. So okay. it's two ceiling faces, two flat faces that go up against each other around a shaft and okay. kind of uh, rub against each other. So on a pump, you have all this liquid in the pump, and you have a rotating shaft coming out. How do you mm-hmm. prevent the water to come out? You can't just put an O-ring because it'll yeah. burn away but with friction. Yeah. yeah, friction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I'm missing you. Um, oh. Yeah, so you have these two faces, and it's pretty cool. So one face is fixed to the wall of the pump, basically, and the other face is fixed to the shaft. So one face rotates, and it creates uh, – and well, and there's a spring that pushes that rotating face, uh, or it could be the fl- fat, flat face, but um, pushes it up against – the other face so as it burns away over time it will still have that compression mm-hmm. and um there is still leakage but very very minimum um now some ceiling mechanical seals will have a fluid film to prevent friction mm-hmm. yes it leaks a little bit but uh, in, in some things yeah it, it okay. lasts longer so there's a give and a take um so it's pretty cool, though, because that gap, if you have the fluid film mechanical seal, that gap is one to three microns uh, wow. thin. A human hair is 60 microns. Whoa. So it's extremely small. <laughs> wow. So those faces also have to be extremely smooth. So mm. they place it on this machine called a lapping machine, and they kind of mm. just leave it there for a while, and it flattens the face. But it's pretty cool. Our boss um, showed us that you can take two ceiling faces, Put them up against each other, apply even just a little bit of pressure, and slightly rotate it, and you have now created a vacuum. So you can let one go, and it'll hang on there. And it's just this face that you Whoa. just put. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool. That's crazy. Um, 
Yeah. So right now we're just learning everything there is to know mm -hmm. about mechanical seals and uh, like we're tearing training. some apart. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever the mechanical seals fail also out in the plants, the plants give it back to us and they say, hey, here's the mechanical seal. What went wrong? And we need another one. So you got to give them another one or whatever. And you also have to take it apart and examine the damage on it. Mm -hmm. Some some of the damages might be very small. Some of the damages might be uh, scratches in the face or chips on the face, all these other things. And you have to look at it and be able to examine and tell what happened in the past, why it failed. So it's pretty cool. There's hmm. that aspect of the job too. But eventually I'll be stationed out in a plant in the area. I'm not sure which oh, okay. one. okay. But yeah, uh, so very cool. I'm, I'm excited. That's I'm awesome. liking it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. That sounds super boring. It, that this just seems like Hey, a but real... you're getting that money though. You're getting <laughs> it, that oil it money. Does sometimes. <laughs> it does sometimes. But it's it's a lot more interesting. Oh, hold up. This is a side note. Do you drink out of the coffee cup out of like that? Oh, this what? is not a coffee cup. Never mind. This is I'm thinking lens. of the cup out there. Oh, this no. Is a lens. You're holding oh, no. it like a coffee cup. Don't want to put liquid in this. That, anyway. I do It'd be have cool a to make coffee one. cup that looks like a lens. Yeah, because I thought yeah. you drank out of the... Let me say, if you, could, if you had anyway. like a crappy I do have lens. lens that's on a shelf out there, and I specifically yeah. have placed it to where people will easily knock it off so that they have really? little heart attacks whenever they... Jeremy's done it before, and he's not happy about it. We saw him <laughs> That's about funny. It. <laughs> That's funny. I, I got to yeah, look at it. Because after. these lenses are not, not cheap yeah. and very fragile. And so if you dropped one from yeah. a high place, it would yeah. almost definitely be broken. What did you do before before you did your boring job? I did another boring <laughs> job. <laughs> kind of. Not really. Uh, Papados. So I was a server at Papados, oh. which is a seafood restaurant here in town. And we know what Papados is. Yeah, well, what if our viewers don't? Who view, <laughs> listeners, listeners, it's delicious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was Real a server. Classy, it swanky place. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. um, I went there because the tips are better, and they yep. were. Yeah. And one would imagine. Yeah. Expensive mm -hmm. items means big tips. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes some people just <laughs> don't <laughs> leave. Tips. Well, yeah, unle unless people are just. Depending on the how garbage. convicted yeah. people are by social obligation. Yeah, and yeah. Th there's. It's weird. There's also some people, uh, so some people just don't leave any tip. Some mm -hmm. people really do believe that like a five or a ten dollar tip is good for anywhere, and a five or ten dollar tip is a good tip. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, but at like Papados and some other restaurants, they'll have a three. So they take three and a half percent of the total ticket price, and they take that out of your pocket as a server to go to bussers, hostesses, everything else. So mm -hmm. it's kind of weird. So whenever somebody orders, uh, I don't know, let's say um, they order $300 worth of food yeah, and they tip $10. Yeah. That that's is insufficient. Yeah, that's insufficient. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's three that's point three three percent. And then you add two yeah. or three dollars. So you... So sometimes you actually owe the restaurant money for waiting on that table, wait, which what? is a weird feeling, which is a weird feeling. You owe the, yeah. wait, so you automatically, why do you owe, so if somebody, as an employee, why do you owe the restaurant money exactly for a percentage of the exactly. customer's tab? Exactly. No, my Nobody question is answer. why. So like, Be, okay, so you as a server owe automatically, whenever you take a table, you owe three and a half percent of that table's ticket to the restaurant. So, so basically you owes, take that out of your tip. Yeah, to the restaurant? Would you take that out of your yeah, tip? Yeah, you to, take that out of your tip, don't, but if they didn't tip anything, you still owe them that. Isn't the Wait, entirety of the customer's bill, doesn't that belong to the restaurant? It, it does. And so, so why do they get an additional 3%? Exactly. And so how so, do you pay it back so if they don't tip? So basically we're paying, um, well, uh, through the other money that you gained that night. I never yeah. walked out of Papa Do's owing anything. Yeah, I never did. But you have like the like, like you might have a, a total of all no, your no, tips no, sorry. for the night. I said that wrong. I never walked out of Papa Do's with no money. I always right. owed stuff. Yeah, you have a but total yeah. of like all your tips for the night, but you have to like take some of that and give it to Papa Do's because yeah. a couple and, of your tables and might not have given. Are you all? 3%. Are you yeah. like still making like? You know, a waiter wage. I mean, like a, you know, like are you still making like only like t two bucks something? Exactly. Wait, how much oh, are you making? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. I do. In uh, well, exact I numbers, please. So, um, I do. After taxes, <laughs> I do. The restaurant does 
give me whenever I work there. Um, like two dollars and thirteen cents per hour. Okay. Basically, you never see any of that money. They've right. they they pay that straight to the government, and mm-hmm. you still owe more money on top of that to the government if you made oh. more than what that calculates. So out to be. almost your entire so, payment is so, tips. Yeah. So there. Wow. Like I would say on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, whatever, mm-hmm. weekday night, uh, maybe. I on a on a good night you'd walk out with a little over a hundred dollars. Uh, working from like six to nine, no, 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 four to nine. Sorry, um, and then like on a bad Monday night, maybe fifty, sixty dollars. In a really bad Monday night, of course, you can owe the restaurant money at the end of the night, but rarely does that ever happen. Um, mm-hmm. And then like on a Friday or Saturday night or Saturday morning, whatever, weekend, that's when you make your big bucks. Uh, mm-hmm. I've worked like 3.30, no, no, 3.45 is when we went in. So 3.45 to 10 o'clock, so one shift, I've made – a little over two hundred dollars easily wow. sometimes, wow. and then uh, so you calculate that out per hour. That sometimes can get up into like the thirty dollars per hour yeah. type range. Mm-hmm. So on weekend nights you can really do good, mm-hmm. but also you can walk out of there with right over one hundred dollars on yeah. a weekend night. Um, mm-hmm. But still, you calculate it out. That's over yeah. minimum wage. Yeah, um, and if you don't make at least minimum wage for the entirety of a two week pay period then the restaurant has to at least pay you minimum wage. But you're never, at Papado's at least, in a two-week time period, the money that you made over the hours that you worked, you're never not going to make mm-hmm. more than minimum mm-hmm. wage. Uh, the manager told me that the average a server gets is like $15 an hour. I think while I was there, I averaged 19 or $20 an hour, hmm. um, which for a serving job is not bad. Yeah. That's great. It's not That's, bad. Thank you, Weston Wandos. Yeah. So if you want to be a server and you don't mind working hard, definitely work at Papa Do's. Or, yeah. uh, or another it, joint or that another, has yeah. like, higher, like a higher-end restaurant. The real yeah. classy people there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And then I had a few crazy tips. Uh, oh, so yeah? One party, party of 10, they walked in. And they rung up a thousand dollars, and one guy in paid one for sitting. It. Yeah, what? And okay. One, yeah, yeah. And and one guy paid for it all, person. and it was amazing. So when one person pays for the entire table, that's kind of a better thing because if everyone individually pays, uh, you might think a, uh, a few things happen. I think everyone says, "Oh, I don't need to tip him a ton because also t- he's going to get." Ten mm-hmm. other people's tips. So magnify <laughs> what I'm going to tip Guilty by as ten. Charged. So they, they, <laughs> I think that's what happens. But whenever one person takes the tab, I, I think on average they're normally going to tip good. But so he tipped twenty percent. So I got two hundred dollars just from that one table. Now I worked my butt off on that one table. They yeah. had a lot of refills and stuff like that. But um, and then well for I a mean, table that size, how many? I mean, uh-huh. how many people were? Was it? You said ten, right? Ten, ten. Okay, well yeah, that's exactly not that 10. big. So. Well, I have ten a, people in well, a party. Well, if they rung up that much money, they're probably like high maintenance. Yeah, ten ten people in a party isn't. You can handle by yourself. Oh, oh yeah, you can yeah. definitely handle by yourself. Yeah. Um, I would say at Papados it'd be a little harder to handle a table of ten versus like, um, I don't know, Cracker Barrel, Cheddar's, mm-hmm. something like that, maybe because yeah, we like have that. to do certain things. You don't um, have to talk down to the yeah. yeah. Well, Cheddar's, t- Cheddar's, but like they, takes the restaurant <laughs> makes sure <laughs> that uh, make sure that their servers do a little bit more for their yeah. table than other restaurants. I yeah. think, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, um, it was great. And I had a few other tips, like a hundred dollars, hundred and thirty-three dollars. I've had a few tips in the hundred range, but that was my biggest tip. Okay, there. I have a question. It's insane. So, what kind yeah. of beer is best? Out of your, <laughs> out of your coworkers at, yeah, at Papa Bear. Bear's, yeah, Black Bear Diner. <laughs> anyway, <Yes. laughs> uh, so yeah. I know. Okay, I'm trying to think, think how to phrase this. Mm-hmm. Out of your coworkers, which one was the stupidest? And how much money did they make? <laughs> uh, oh, the stupidest? Yeah, no, like, like that's, that's, um, I was joking. <laughs> you don't I was going to no, say, say, say that's that. a tough question. To uh, well, I'm I don't saying think like, stupid. so basically, like, <laughs> did you have coworkers that really slacked and didn't make a lot of money? Yeah, there, there yeah. were some. Um, if some you wanted servers. to make money, you could make money. But if you didn't want to make money, yeah, you it, could 
not make money. It's yeah. hard to slack on your job at Papados because the managers really stay on top of you. But mm-hmm. I would say there is definitely some servers out there and at Papados that don't care a lot for their table. So it goes towards their tip. Sure. Uh, so they they just don't have a personality. That could be one thing that really cuts mm-hmm. away at your tip that you don't really recognize. But if you don't have a personality or if you're not refilling those drinks, that I think that's the number one thing that I agree contributes with that. to. Or, like, or, I feel like yeah. how I gauge so the service is how many like times that. I had my drink. Well, refilled. that yeah. too. And also just like the attentiveness. Yeah. Like yeah. say if they're walking by, you're like, hey, can but, you, can I, can I get some, like, can I get my ticket or something like that? Yeah. Cause like, there is a thing is being too attentive though. There, there is. Like I don't want a it's person like, to like come yeah, by definitely. and be like, it's like you get, oh, do you need you anything? get like a, a quarter done with your drink and they refill it. It's like, okay, you can chill out. There have been, hasn't changed. The answer to that question has not changed yeah. in the last 30 seconds since you asked it last time. Because yeah. well, I remember I was I was at a restaurant within the past month. Uh-huh. And like a restaurant which shall be unnamed. Yeah, unnamed. And <laughs> uh and the waitress just like it, like we got her attention. She looked at us, heard what we said Kids. and then just ignored us. Wow. And I was like uh-huh. Yeah, you're getting like Everybody a $1 did. tip. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't care how much my ticket was like I was and that, if you if you just like ignore us when we're trying to ask you something, mm-hmm. like yeah, it might have been like a little busy. But the thing is, like she was run, she was going to all kinds of other tables, like right next to us too. It mm-hmm. wasn't even like across the restaurant. Yeah. It mm-hmm. was just like she didn't even listen to us. Yeah, maybe you, know? you were like SpongeBob in that episode of SpongeBob where you had bad breath. Maybe that's maybe. That's well, I wasn't maybe, on the end maybe. of the table, and so. so you thought you were ugly, but really you just had bad breath. Yeah. You know what? Do you, yeah, um, do I know, you know what you're referencing. Yeah, yes. thank you. Okay. You see, maybe it could have been your fault. You never know. You never know. I, I feel bad. I feel bad. Like, even if like I have horrible service, mm-hmm. I still tip at least well, double the tax. Well, the thing is, normally normally that's my philosophy yeah. as well. Oh, but man. it was just like worse than bad. Yeah, that's crazy. And that I was is like, crazy to like yeah. full face, like make eye contact with you and like walk mm-hmm. away. Yeah. And yeah. so I was like, well, you're not getting a good tip from me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I normally, I normally, I feel obligated and I normally tip yeah, yeah. at least double yeah. tax. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, at least something like at least 10%, yeah. at least yeah, 10 yeah, to 15%. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what I like to tip. But going back to, I, for, I forgot to make my point earlier about the $5 oh, yeah. to $10 tip or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. A 5 or $10 tip for waiting on somebody for an hour, heck yeah, I'll take 5 to $10 any day. Yeah. But whenever you had that three in a, 3.33 yeah. or whatever, that can eat away really quick. Mm-hmm. So somebody can lay down a 10 and I actually get like $3 out of that. Yeah. And I think, I guess some people don't realize that. Some yeah. restaurant, I've heard of one restaurant that says, okay, everyone's tip goes into a bowl. We split it at the end of the night. Yeah, oh, that doesn't benefit any. <laughs> that doesn't benefit anybody. That's so many people. Communism. Have, yeah. So I mean, many now, now everyone doesn't want to do. Everyone wants to be lackluster. No. Oh, yeah. Because it's like, oh, it doesn't exactly. matter. We're just gonna split it at the end. Of the yeah, night. yeah. Exactly. That, exactly. That's a really interesting thing that I don't understand. I don't. Yeah. Like Why you'd want to discourage good service? Exactly. Like, uh-huh. like it just helps incentivizes people to do a the bad least. job. Whenever they're, whenever like the amount of money yeah, yeah. That they receive is directly proportional to their job performance. Y'all, y'all know that show that Gordon Ramsay did mm. to where he'd go to like restaurants and yes. make it better and everything. Dude, I love watching that. First of all, <laughs> I, saw, I love Gordon I saw Ramsay. a clip uh, today. Uh, it was like of the one where uh, all the tips went to the owner. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah say? Basically, there's a restaurant that he was going to, and he's like, he asked the waitress about tips, and she said, "Well, we don't get tips." And she's like, "He's like, what?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah. it goes all to the owner." And then on the way out, he gave her like a like cash just in her hand, and like it, it panned to like a, a lady that was just like yeah. fuming, like so desperately mad. What? Yeah. Why? So. How much do the wait the waiters make minimum wage? Oh no, I haven't I haven't seen the probably episode. something like that. I think they probably they, make minimum an wage and then rate. and then all the tips go toward the boss. Yeah, and that doesn't incentivize incentivize would, the server to get I just any don't better understand. service. That's such a weird yeah. business. Model. That's called greed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like I don't understand being that like ball faced, terrible of a person. Yeah. Uh, to just be like, ah, oh, no, dude, all your money is gonna that's go like, to me. Yeah, that's like that's feudal, yeah. like the chief of a medieval village. It, and if he's doing it because he needs that money, that just shows a poor management and a poor ownership of the restaurant. Because yeah. if you can't run a restaurant 
and make either quality food enough to charge better prices or just know how to charge better prices and serve the food that's granting of that, uh, then you're just running a bad restaurant. Hmm. <laughs> and you make money from the food that you serve and not from the service of the server. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Matt, yeah. what is the best thing on the menu of Papados? Ooh. Um, if you like this, of course. Uh, mm-hmm. I would say the best thing on the menu is either the AKC or the lobster, whichever person you are. What, um, is, what is AKC? Oh, uh, sorry. That's that's, that's server slang. That's, that's the senator slang. lady. Alaskan king crab. <laughs> uh, I would say in terms of... Yeah, I would say in terms of king crab. Yeah, the the quality of the meat. Oh. I've never tried e- either one of these, but I just know what? Alaskan king crab okay. is harder to get. You know, it's okay. it's more of a high quality meat. Mm-hmm. You're gonna pay more per pound in the Alaskan king crab. So probably that. There there are some people who come in there, and if we have like a five six pound, seven pound, even more than that, sometimes lobster, they'll get the lobster. But uh, with the AKC, I think you get three legs of the Alaskan king crab. Mm-hmm. Um, that that's really nice. They give you a little uh, container of butter or whatever. They put it over a little thing that has a candle in it and it heats up the Ooh, butter and everything. Ooh, it's a nice bougie. experience. <laughs> yeah, I would. If you're looking for quality, them. though, I would. Yeah. Uh, or no, quantity. 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 Gotcha. Um, the del- yeah, we call it the deluxe. It's the Papado platter. Um, okay. It has a ton of fried food, so if you like that, mm. do that. You, you're definitely going to be taking some home unless you can eat a lot. <laughs> um, and then also, if you're looking for like the most bang for your buck, it's like fifteen, sixteen dollars on the lunch menu, which is that's that's a lot for a meal. But <laughs> at Papados, that's like the cheapest thing almost. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's the oh, I forget what it's called. Um, some- the miss no. Maybe, yeah, I think the Mississippi Catfish Etouffee. So it's blackened catfish and mm. shrimp etouffee. Mm. I personally like trading the shrimp etouffee for fried crawfish because I like that better. But the mm. fried crawfish is really good. It's slightly mm. spicy and everything. So like fried really crawfish good. in the etouffee? No, 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 no. Take out the f- shrimp etouffee. So, oh, yeah, I've gotcha. never tried their shrimp gotcha. etouffee, gotcha. but I like crawfish tails better than mm-hmm. shrimp, so I do mm. that. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. No, no, dude, I'm about to say which great. one of those which also, one of those would you order, Nathan? I like me some etouffee. Yeah. Mm. And cheap. Do you okay, <laughs> so do you like crawfish etouffee too? Oh, I love both. I love any type of etouffee. There's this um no, do you like crawfish? What is it called? Um I forget. So, um I didn't sell a lot of them because they're not on the menu. But anyway, so they have a fried crawfish and a crawfish etouffee on their lunch and on their dinner. That's a a bigger portion uh, mm. size food, and it's pretty good. But they also have one that's fried crawfish, fried uh, no 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 crawfish etouffee, and then crawfish something. I forget what it's mm. called. You're a big Cajun food. Anyways, oh, food I love person. Cajun food. Mm. That I was born in New Orleans. I didn't know that. Oh, born mm-hmm. and raised, or just not like, just not raised, just born. Okay. You but, lived oh, your whole life in Texas? Yeah. Okay, then I can okay. not hate you. Um, uh, not to say that I hate all people but from Louisiana. I, I but love I have a Cajun food. Like, mm-hmm. I am a huge fan of Cajun food. Yeah. So where do you get the best Cajun food? Okay, so there's a there's one spot in Lafayette. If I have not, to drive all the way to Lafayette? Well, I'm saying if you're on the way where somewhere La- and you want to stop in Lafayette, it's about an hour and a half from here, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, right. Actually, from here, it's probably around... Hour forty five to two hours, okay. but there's a place called uh, Old Time Grocery. Yeah, that sounds okay. appetizing. <laughs> and, no, 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 no. And, it sounds like a hole in the wall place, <laughs> which does sound appetizing. And I love hole. They in the have wall. excellent po' boys. Oh, okay, yeah. at, like that. I think they get the bread from New Orleans, mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, and like they like during like the spring, they have like that you can get a crawfish one. You can get a crawfish po' boy or a shrimp po' boy, and they can, they also have other meats you can use. But man, the shrimp and the crawfish po' boy, hmm. oh, they're phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in New Orleans, you know, there's uh, like Johnny's po' boy in New Orleans is really really good. A lot of sandwiches. Like sandwiches are real good, uh, but like a lot of these sandwich, or well, not the one in Lafayette, but a lot of the like there's certain places you go for certain meals. Like I I can't think of a a lot of the restaurants off the top of my head, but mm. man, 
It's just old town grocery, something like that. Yeah, interesting. Or old time grocery. I can't remember. Okay, something like that. But it's it's right there in Lafayette. So where do you get the best crawfish? Oh, I don't know. You got to know these things. Nick. I mean, I, the thing is, is that like the only time I really have crawfish are at crawfish boils. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't actively seek crawfish because it's here. like the yeah, it's very good whenever you do eat it. But mm-hmm. the thing is, like, I'm one of those people that like. I like to feel full. Yeah, like, like it I takes agree with it that. takes so much it effort takes to so even much effort. to yes. even get like slightly full. Yes, like yes. and so you have to have like the supplement of like the corn or the potatoes yeah. or the sausage that's in with it. <laughs> yeah, in we, order to actually like be I do agree with that. fulfilled. Yeah. I like I like crawfish. I do. But I it's love crawfish. Way too much work for just a little tiny. Yeah, and it's like bit it, of meat. yeah. If you're like you know socializing and doing it, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah. I don't just go out and be like. I really just want to eat a big old thing of crawfish and not be full at the end of it. <laughs> Dude, I haven't eaten crawfish as much as I should, but I totally disagree. I'll stay there for like <laughs> three hours if it's like great crawfish. I like a lot of spice, so I gotta. And then also, okay, maybe even better than the crawfish. I know y'all will probably disagree. Mm-hmm. Is the sausage that they put in or the corn? I, Dude, oh, if does they that, have that great sausage seasoning is on everything. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, disagree. Okay. Good. <laughs> me, me, Manuel, and Presley went to this thing uh, with Manuel's friend in Galveston one time. Mm-hmm. And it was at somebody's house. Uh, it was a nice house too. It was one of those beach houses, um, which like the first level is just concrete or whatever, yeah. and the house mm-hmm. is above you. But it also had. Uh, boat thing where you pull your boat up and you can lift it up with his net yeah. out of the water or whatever so wow. it was like right up. it was a nice beach house but there was this one guy we i think stayed there for four or five hours and he ate crawfish the entire time it wow. was insane this guy wow. was insane i agree with you though on having spicy Jeez. the thing yeah. is it's like oh, yeah. i don't like there's a there's a there's an okay amount of spice because I, mm-hmm. I like hot food mm-hmm. yeah but there was one time where the dude put really? way Way too much. Like, like Who, what if, dude if, is that? I want to go. I want well, to. I'm talking like Man, it, finally an equal match. So, so like, yeah. If if it's tingling your lip a little bit, you know it's good, yeah. right? Yep. It yeah. has to be. It has to be at least that spicy. Gotta make your right? eyes water a little. Uh, just a hair. Yeah. Just a hair. This dude, it was in my opinion. It it made me not. I mean, it. I yeah. still ate it. Yeah. But the problem yeah. was is that I would literally take one bite and then like. Everything was just completely on fire. I was Dang. like, "Whoa!" I was like, <laughs> "Dang!" It's it's a little bit too much. It was a little bit too much for my liking. Yeah, but uh, I don't know the the danger of accidentally touching your eyes with the crawfish crawfish juice all over your fingers is what makes the experience of eating crawfish. Yeah, if, if, if that danger is not there, mm-hmm. then it's not. Well, tasty. the thing is, I like them decently hot. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I, I like to be, feel tingle. You know, it's supposed to burn a little bit. Where where can you get good crawfish around here? There's Steamboat a, Bills. Oh, I don't know. Steamboat Bills is fantastic. They don't have one here in Beaumont, do they? It's not in Beaumont. It's in it's Lake like, Charles. Yeah, but it's like yeah, yeah. it's like I thought forty so. minutes. I thought so. It's not that far. Okay. I might Steamboat Bills is fantastic. We always stop by that Steamboat Bills on band trips. I was in band yeah. in high school. Actually, side note, I was gonna say this earlier, I almost went for music education. Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. But then I changed to mechanical engineering whenever you play? I joined in trumpet. Oh, oh heck yeah but anyways we stop by there all the time on band competitions and everything mm-hmm. but i haven't had crawfish this season and doesn't it end like this month well it doesn't end but doesn't like all I the think, good crawfish uh, yeah, I think, basically go away this i month? don't know i don't know i don't, know. It. I don't need so. it that often too. i know there's a couple hey, craw- really but crawfish places steamboat locally bills. but i don't i don't know the names of them steamboat bills has great po boys uh great pistolets yeah uh etouffee but they're crawfishes. Do they have it's reasonably fantastic. priced? Crawfish? Yeah, it's not. It's okay. not that bad well, either. You know, I, what? anybody want to go to Steamboat Bill Sunday Ooh. after church? I want to. Man, your tem- it's, it's, it's Sunday's <laughs> Father's Day. <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> Blast, uh, Father's Dad. You want to come <laughs> two and a half hours down here? Yeah. Oh man, I'll pay for my. Your parents meal. are two and a half hours away. <laughs> Where do you parents live? Uh, they no 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 two hours to uh, two hours to Beaumont probably like. Two and a half hours to Steamboat Bills. Uh-huh. I, Where do your parents live? for the Steamboat Bills. They're like... Uh, in Lufkin. In Lufkin, oh. Texas. Yeah, two okay. hours north of here. Not too... So why are you in Beaumont? 
I am in Beaumont because I moved down here for college for Lamar, and then mm-hmm. I like the area. And plus, I met Allie, and we mm-hmm. both like the area. And it's close to her family and close to my family, so we uh, decided to stay down here. Mm-hmm. Plus, I really like how it's pretty close to the beach and pretty close to Houston. Yeah, yeah and like, half you're at Like this, place. this, a- this general area of Southeast Texas is really like good it. because you're relatively close mm-hmm. to a lot of things. Like it's not super far to. Like drive to Houston for the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, you know, say if you want to go. Or even over to Louisiana. Like, too. Yeah, yeah, or to Louisiana. Or, you know, if you want to go to San Antonio for the mm-hmm. weekend, like that's viable, true. you know. But it's not so big of a town that it's like crazy. Uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shoot, I live in Vider, so. Yeah. Five o'clock traffic yeah. on the highway is annoying, but that's the only thing annoying. It's not even. It's, it's better than even Houston. Bad. It's, oh, better. it's better than L.A. L.A. was unmovable i never drove anywhere in la okay here's a question is beaumont does does beaumont stink to y'all on like a <laughs> weekly basis because everyone it smells like yeah it doesn't okay. smell Not no that i've noticed okay okay because you... I, I you know other big cities i've been to it has that big city smell in downtown hmm. like in certain like beside alleys or something like that yeah, like, I'm talking yeah. about it's just like, like that old refineries like all the refineries and plants smell. and everything. I, nor- I noticed refineries. more that yes, smell sorry. actually at Lamar. Yeah, I agree um, with that. Yeah, at because Lamar, at yeah. Lamar, I've there have been uh-huh. many occasions where I distinctly is like there are chemicals in the air right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you have that sulfur plant right there, yeah. um, and then also, uh-huh. like there was one time at night they were running the flares, hmm. uh-huh. and like I stepped outside from the music building and I was mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like yeah. it, it didn't have like. A super defined smell, yeah, you start but like just the nose. air, just like the air <laughs> felt different, yeah. and like yeah. there was a tiny hinge of like a, an odd smell. Yeah. Like, yeah. man, I got to love yep. cancer, man. That's five years People. off my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People outside of Beaumont will always comment about the smell. I go up to That's Lufkin. That's interesting. Yeah, I go well, up I mean, to Lufkin. They're yeah. like, oh, do you hate the smell down there? And I was like, what smell? I'm like, I've smelled it a few times. Yeah. Say a few times. Maybe I've like definitely 10 to 20 like times at well, Lamar. I mean, the, yeah. And the then Mars, maybe yeah. on the highway sometimes? Yeah, maybe. sometimes, yeah. But, I mean, like, but they, like they don't call it the cancer basis. belt for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, well whenever true. people say that, I just say, oh, that's the smell of money. All these plants, all the money. It is money, but, I mean, money or longevity of life. <laughs> the walkways. That's the smell of cancer. The walkways going from the Montaigne Center over to the campus. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. My mom said that they told women they weren't allowed to wear nylon socks whenever she went to like nylon stockings. Uh, whenever she went to Lamar, the campus was like, you can't wear nylon stockings Why? on the walkway because the chemicals in the air will melt the nylon stockings. No. On your legs. No way, man. I want to <laughs> yeah. go buy some nylon socks but that was, now. <laughs> that was like in the Well, that was whenever 80s. there was like no yeah, regulations. Probably, probably like, like regulations. When, that's whenever Houston had like really bad smog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Because like I'm, uh, I was talking with one of my teachers, one of my professors, and she said that when she was growing up, they went to Houston or like they went to Astroworld. That's mm-hmm. what they and uh Astroworld, man, blast from the past. I know. And uh they were riding in the back of the truck. And she said that I think they had like a camper top on or something. Mm-hmm. And she said it actually no they didn't. Well it like, got to the point to where uh when they were in Houston, they had to get into the cab because the air was like burning their lungs. Wow. And like stuff like that. And that's crazy. I was like I, like I didn't know Houston had that. Like nowadays, you know, not so much. But yeah. like, it's hard to believe that you know it was not that so much ago. worse back yeah. then. You know, there was. That's I just crazy. heard about the in in England. Like the whole reason why they have clean air, uh, like really? like protection and stuff like that, is because uh, the the smog used to be terrible, terrible in like London, hmm. and one day. <laughs> Uh, one week there was really bad fog and because it was so humid and the air didn't move, like the fog just sat over London. Mm-hmm. And so all the humidity like bonded to the smog, like the, the smoke and ash uh, just in the air from people mm-hmm. like burning their, their all their stuff. Uh, it, it just fell and it was like on the city for days. Whoa. And it killed twelve thousand people. Whoa! Like, like because they literally like breathing in smoke and Dang. and soot like the whole day, 
And so after that, they were like, "Yeah, we, we do should probably." About so is it from like factories? Or well, probably from just like coal factories. Yeah, like, I would imagine yeah, coal refineries. I don't know, but that was back like whenever London. England was like run on like gas and, and oh, you know, and yeah. So yeah, everybody had a fireplace that they burned. Well, I mean, yeah. you think about like yeah. nowadays, like China is still yeah. China and India are horrendous. Yeah. Like they put That's out the cool. most pollution on Earth, yeah. and. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. everyone in China, like especially around bigger cities, always wear masks yeah. just because of how potent the air is. Yeah. You know, and like the the amount of aerosols that China produces actually changes the global temperature. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's crazy. Fun fact for y'all: uh-huh. mechanical seals were invented. Because we're going back to the mechanical seals going, thing. We're, we're, <laughs> everything full circle. circle, full triangle, full, full triangle, triangle. If you remember that from uh-huh. Sunday school, anyway. Um, I don't. What are you describing? I don't get it. Triangle. Was, it was when we were over in the <laughs> other building. Um, I think it was actually Sheena who invented the full triangle. But we made some. We made some. Uh, well, we made like three points one day. I think is how it was. And she said, instead of full circle, it's full triangle because it was yeah. like here to here to here really fast. Anyways, okay. Okay. Um, so uh, mechanical seals. So they were invented because people would just, uh, they'd have this little stuffing. I forget what it is made of. But anyways, they basically like stuffed this box. I think they'd call it stuffing box. Um, I'm new to this. <laughs> I've just been working there for a week. But okay. So they stuffed this box with the stuffing. And it would kind of hold the fluid from coming out, but it wouldn't be fully successful, of course, and it still leaked just right onto the ground or whatever. And then the government basically came in and said, we can't have just chemical going onto the ground and going into the air. Nah. That's when they forced people to and it, the like that's, that's one thing the uh, like that's a, one thing we learned a lot about in environmental geology. Hmm. What well, yeah. like the cool thing about yeah. that class is that it talked about like natural disasters and hmm. how they happen, why they happen, how humans are involved with that. And it was yeah. it really opened my eyes a lot to like groundwater pollution. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. like just water going on the ground. Well, I mean, well, because you think about like when the water goes in the ground, like groundwater right. is like huge within aquifers. huge aquifers. It's yeah. not like massive caves or anything. It's like right. within like sand porous or rock. it's a very porous rock or like mm-hmm. you know something like that. And so, whenever you like leak gas on the ground, that gas eventually finds its way yeah. into that aquifer. Mm-hmm. And so it pollutes it. And so if you have like oil and stuff just like spilling out everywhere onto the ground mm-hmm. underneath, like, you know, like what's what's the aquifer's mm-hmm. name that goes like from like San Antonio? I don't know. It's like a big that one. big massive aquifer. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like if that gets like compromised, right. then like that's like 12 million people without yeah. clean water, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And, um, I don't mm-hmm. know. It's how, how small of a percentage of the water on the planet is actually drinkable. Is really terrifying. Like when oh, it's you think less about, than it's like the Earth is made of like what seventy something percent of ocean water. Yeah, seventy five percent water. But even like the water, like on it's like one percent of that is like yeah. fresh water. Yeah, less than one percent. And then out water. of that one percent, it's like only yeah. like, uh, and then most of that one percent is made up of uh, like glaciers or frozen right. ice. Right. And then <laughs> it's like Dang. well, like we we are surviving off a very small amount of water. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyways, we we probably have to be done. We got to wrap up. Sorry, right. get y'all out of here. But uh, thank y'all so much for hey, uh, stopping by, being on a podcast. This was a good one. It made me very hungry. Uh, I, I want to go to Steamboat Bills. Not Popeyes. Not Popeyes. <laughs> Popeyes. Popeyes. <laughs> Steamboat Bills. I don't know why I say Popeyes. I prefer not to drop forty bucks yeah. tonight on dinner. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, I'll. Really you know, you know what's pretty epic. <laughs> yeah. I know we're supposed to be wrapping up. But we're supposed like, to be wrapping up. You can go to McDonald's okay. and get three cheeseburgers and a large water for three dollars and change. What? Yeah, I guess that's true. Like if you order off the dollar the, menu, yeah, the dollar the menu chickens. At oh, dude, also they were like a dollar <laughs> nine or something like that. Do you see the Do you see the Burger King promo that like threw shade at I think at Chick Fil A? I think I did. Where they they all uh, during the month of during like Pride Month, mm, all yeah. the proceeds from their chicken sandwich are going oh, to like goodness. like uh, gay rights activism yeah. charities. Yeah, uh, I saw something yeah. about that. But <laughs> it's like Chick Fil A just like. We do not care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Chick-fil-A's feeling pretty secure about themselves. Well, I mean, the thing is, y- y'all remember 
Like Nathan, no, sorry. you have to go to dinner. I'm sorry. You, you're going to be late. No, it's going to be postponed your fault. It, I have audiographic it. evidence. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. Just one side note. <laughs> okay, sure. you, do y'all remember whenever Chick-fil-A stopped donating to Salvation Salvation Army like do last year? I don't. There was at one point in time where they stopped donating to all those organizations. That was dumb. Probably just stay afloat, maybe. It, it was like multiple. It wasn't help. just one. Yeah. Stay they stopped donating. They would have lost a lot of money from that. And then... And then they start donating to him yeah. again, like four months later. Was it because of COVID? I have no idea. I, but it, it, it was Probably not good PR. Yeah. yeah. It, Half of the people who go to Chick Fil A go because it helps them feel better about themselves. Uh, and but it's really great chicken. It is well. great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have right. to be done now, Nathan. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is Bye. the end. Okay, this is just leaving, I guess. I really wanted to say. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I really wanted to throw We're done. one more point. I no, didn't have Matt, a point to make. We're done. I didn't have a point we're to done. make. I just wanted okay. to say. No, hey, we're hey, leaving. By the way, Goodbye. I don't have a point. <laughs>